couldn't tell if those were cheers or booze. Right? <laughs> you're, so. you're a boo. Oh my gosh. Are you guys awake? They throw shit. Yes. That's amazing. Hi. Are you guys awake? Oh, wait. Yeah. Yes. I'm you. Oh, really? Okay. Wow, I'm Amber. Cool okay, today I'm Bryn April, and today. No, I want you guys to move. No. <laughs> okay, never mind. Kendall? Here, I brought you some lemons. <laughs> You have a surplus. Did anybody now. did anybody come to our autograph signing? What's with the lemon? Okay, well, hold on. Did anyone come to our autograph signing? Okay. Austin threw a lemon at me. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt. We had a lemon party. We had a lemon party. What's with the lemons? I, look. She wanted to know. I we I just brought uh, I just brought like two and a half lemons for myself for the weekend. And that ended up on the internet. And then I, uh, people kept asking me about the lemons, and I said, okay, here's the deal. If you bring me more lemons, I'll give you a, a, like a, a free thing at my table. And then a bunch of people brought me lemons. So people are paying you in lemons? Pay me in lemons, don't. <laughs> I thought it was a joke, uh, and I really got what I asked for. <laughs> I have a lot of lemons. <laughs> Do you have room in your suitcase for all these lemons? No, I'm gonna squeeze them before I leave. I bought a citrus squeezer. Yeah. So you're gonna have to pack like a pitcher. I'm gonna drink it. This is actually very right therapeutic. I'm gonna put some water in. Here's the funny thing, What's right? What's the funny thing? Is like, watered down lemonade sounds disgusting. Mm -hmm. But water with a hint of lemon sounds delicious. Fair enough. What's the deal with that? I couldn't tell you. I'm gonna make lemonade. When life gives you lemons. <laughs> you know, uh, lemons uh, are not a naturally occurring fruit. Were you aware of this? No. They were uh, crossbred from a citron and some other thing. Uh, you almost swore. You almost swore. I'm so proud of you. We don't know what I was gonna yourself. say. Uh, <laughs> point being, point being, uh, uh, human. Agriculture uh, created the lemon. Life did not give us lemons. We did it to ourselves. Oh my gosh. So it's lying to us. That saying is lying. I'm not lying. I didn't make that up. I, I think I read that on Reddit or something. Okay, it's so. It's true though. I Googled you know, it. There's a tree now where um, people have taken like branches of other trees and like grown them together. And um, so you can have one tree. Oh, I've heard of that, this. Yes, that grows like multiple different yeah. kinds That's of crazy. fruit. That's crazy. That's also amazing. That's really you would cool. never I have the name of it. Story they like, it's like skin grafting, but they like graft a branch from a different tree. Yes, exactly. And certain trees that so can So you can like, have like multiple citrus. Yeah. Science is so cool. Science is yes. awesome. Science is magic, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to our science panel. Welcome to our Attack on Titan science panel. Well, actually, a few minutes ago, Brynn and I almost were going to make this into the what five love language yes. do you use? What, what, out of the five the love quiz? languages. Where's the quiz? The quiz is on fivelovelanguages.com. Yep. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, we were all in the green room just taking it. We were both like, we're so intrigued. We need to know. <laughs> so and what are they? Well, uh, I didn't finish taking the quiz. The, I'm only 83% done. I'm taking this very seriously. <laughs> but but, but uh, the five, I don't know what all of them are. I just Physical the ones touch, that I words like. of affirmation, acts of service. Quality um, time. Huh? Quality time. Quality time. We yes. know which one's important to you. And then gifts. <laughs> no, I just, I just remember because uh, one of the handlers just finished it. And quality time is what stuck out to you. <laughs> Well, oh, well, maybe. Hey, never we'll know. We'll find out when you finish the quiz, Isn't that woman. That's so bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, who are you guys? Just in case they don't oh, know who yeah. you play. I'm Lauren Landa. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm Brene April, and I play Queen Historia. Yeah. <laughs> Tyndall. Hi, my name is Austin Tyndall. Austin Tyndall! Come I, on, I play Marco Bot. And I'm only answering questions to. for the first half of this panel. Rude! Oh, <laughs> 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 That's the first time I've done uh, that. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I worked out really well. I'm going to do it again. This oh, is genuinely no. the first time I... <laughs> I'm, I'm Bryn April, you guys. <laughs> I'm Bryn April. And who do you play? Without I, looking it up, who do you play? I play Krista slash Historia. Fight me, bitch. <laughs> it's not true. Fight me. I, I, I love this.
this show so much. To be fair though, I have not seen any of season three, so I, I don't know. But before we actually go into that, um, usually, I mean, because we've only done, I've only done one Attack on Titan panel with these guys, and that was when we had the giant yes. Yes. panel in uh, Orlando, where we all attempted to sing the theme song, and it was horrible. Oh That's on the internet. Don't it's on the internet, it. and it's terrible. Don't uh, that was, I was the first person to be shoved on stage, and that was my first opening ceremonies. Everyone just assumed I knew what I was doing. <laughs> to be fair, we all got that one part, the Yay, God! Like, we got the one part. So, wait, hang on. Okay, go ahead. And then I'll let you go. Before we even got to that point, when they introduced all of us, I was the first person to get shoved on stage, and I didn't know, no one told me what I was supposed to do. You're supposed to walk up and be like, hey, I have panels and autographs. My name's Austin. Come, come check it out. I literally, like, they, they gave me a microphone and they were, and some people were like, gosh, go, go. And I walked up and I was like, I was legit like, what's, what, what's going on? And then, like, cause there's a hole, like the, there was a thrust. So I just started like catwalking it. I was like, hey. And everyone was like clapping. And I was like, I like this. Am I supposed to, and I was, uh, I didn't, someone had to be like, oh, you're just, <laughs> like, oh, am I done? Am I done? Am I supposed to give this to somebody? When it, you don't tell actors what to do, they're just gonna. You improvise. were there. What's funny too is that you don't remember because you were backstage busy worrying about yourself. Because <laughs> okay. there was a Please curtain, I couldn't see on. Austin. No. <laughs> I was great. Oh. Really <laughs> so, I participated in it. Because we didn't know what we were supposed to do, so a bunch of the actors we were just reading off like an apple. And I, I just think it, I just remember going on there and thinking, I'm just gonna sit because I'm an awkward turtle. So I'm just gonna. I also know he ended up with the stalker. I don't know if that was before or after. Oh sure. yeah, that definitely. It might have been after. Been. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it was before, it definitely intensified. After. And we all, well, not all of us, but some of us recorded. I did not. I don't think because I was like, no. I'm do that. But Austin recorded a video. Let's uh, pull it up. <laughs> it's on my YouTube page. <laughs> introducing himself and he kept messing up his name. It's a good it's one of my, it's one of my finer pieces of work. <laughs> so for a while, anytime Austin was announced as a guest and went on stage, like, hello, let's welcome Austin Tyndall. The entire cast would be like, Austin Tyndall! Because yeah, fun story. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have not seen any of season three, um, but before we go into that, usually when, and I don't know about you guys, but usually when we do Attack on Titan panels, we generally talk about the anime, um, because I have not read the manga, and I would not like it to be spoiled for me, so please, I mean, I can't speak for these guys, but I would prefer if there are no questions asked about the, uh, oh God, don't, let's, don't be that, don't be that dude. <laughs> Don't be that dude, no, look, it's, This is the internet. I have to prove to my girlfriend that I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> She's texting me. Um, but yeah, so please don't ask any questions about the manga because I won't know and I don't want anything to be don't spoiled. I swear to God, Austin. <laughs> she just needs to know. <laughs> she needs to know. She needs to know about so she, she says, oh, no worries, that's fine. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry, that's, that's fine. That didn't really happen. My dad just sent me an Easter text. Happy Easter, everybody! Happy Easter! Yay! Wow, you guys are not awake, are you? <laughs> Happy Sunday! Wake up! <laughs> Please! Hello. Hello. Oh, my show. <laughs> Don't be that dude! Tyndall. Don't be what? that dude. What dude? The dude that's like constantly taking selfies you. on panels. Or we're supposed to be talking. You're, you can talk all you want, so I wasn't talking. So do you have to pose for the picture? I do, I absolutely do have to pose for the Does picture. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the back. Yes, please. Uh, hey Austin, can you tell your dad happy Easter for me? Yeah, man. Hey, Austin, can you tell your dad happy Easter for me? Yeah, man. What's your name again? Hey. What's your name? Hey. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
just spell it the most obnoxious way possible. Look, he, he sent me a picture. Jay Remy. <laughs> this isn't even his child. Oh this is someone else's child. I don't know what's happening but I right now. It. Yes. You would have been really proud of Austin and how much you guys met Shakespeare. Hank says Aww. hi. Actually, <laughs> actually, did she just complimented your panel and you didn't Thank even hear you. it? No, I heard it. You complimented uh, my ability to cuss. I meant to do more Shakespeare and less <laughs> cussing. Actually, I, may, I was not on the panel. However, I did hear Austin do some Shakespeare, uh, and it was absolutely amazing. I heard him do some in the green room, and it was beyond fantastic. Seriously. No, seriously. There's so much passion in him doing Shakespeare, and uh, it's. I was telling him last night that I really cannot, for the life of me, and I was a theater student for my entire life, um, and I could not for the life of me remember Shakespeare, at least the monologues or the soliloquies. Oh really? Just no. the memoriza memorization? So no, just I'm, I've never been good about that. I've never been good about that, which is one of the main reasons why I haven't even jumped into, good God, Tyndall. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I haven't jumped into TV, uh, TV and film. But um, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I talked Austin into doing, because uh, he, I, we were talking. We got into the discussion of what he loves about Shakespeare, and he has a favorite. And he said that Romeo and Juliet is one of his favorites. I well, yeah. I've done. Why are we talking about Shakespeare? Because she Thanks said you had a great Shakespeare panel. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Well, I've done it a bunch of times. Um, I played Romeo in high school. Uh, and then yeah, I ended up did. dating Juliet afterwards. I actually, it's weird because I had spent the entire year trying to get this girl to go out with me and she just wasn't that interested. I even paid, we were seniors and I paid this freshman $20 to sing Steve Miller band lyrics to her. <laughs> <laughs> Not even sing it, I was just like, I wrote it on a piece of paper and I was like, go say this to the oh And it was, uh, 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 I, I really love your peaches want to shake your tree. <laughs> the line. Anyway. <laughs> she thought it was cute. She started dating me eventually. <laughs> but I talked him into, I talked him into loving Twelfth Night because Twelfth Night is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. I'm glad that you reminded me of that. Absolutely. I will continue to remind you Twelfth Night. Uh, that's cool, yeah, because it, and my, my love as a kid was a desperate love filled with the need for uh, attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gotten over it. <laughs> uh, but but uh, it's just like we were talking about um, uh, Twelfth Night. It's like a, a more mature uh, conversation about that same self-indulgent itch. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and that has to do with Attack on Titan. Because... <laughs> because <laughs> you didn't think uh, you were going to bring it back. <laughs> because Marco had a similar itch that he really needed someone to scratch. And it didn't. <laughs> Don't stop. I don't know what's happening right now. What are you, are you stripping? What's, what's happening? Is that what you want to do? <laughs> this is all on camera. Uh, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Uh, buddy girl. Oh, we kind of have that right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> That's a that, I love your half-hearted attempt at a joke. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they got a reaction out of yours. Okay. I actually have a story here. Uh, and if you've ever seen me before, you've probably already heard it, but <laughs> this legit Okay. So I auditioned for uh, Aaron and Armin and Connie, and I didn't know who Marco was. Because I didn't like read the manga that specifically. You kind of like when when we're getting all of these animes thrust at us all the time. Shut up, Dad. He's now he's really interested. <laughs> Next, she, he's like, "Who's Hank?" And she just sent a selfie. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Um, <laughs> I'm about like, to take hello. I think my dad likes. <laughs> I'm gonna send him a link to this uh, video later, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna put that on. I'm gonna send a selfie back! <laughs> I think my dad likes you. 
<laughs> okay. He might Marco's be single story. soon. Marco's story. This. Marco's story. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I didn't really know who Marco was. I had an idea about what the show was about. Uh, and, you know, uh, we didn't know that Marco was going to be as kind of impactful of, of a character as he ended up being because he became a symbol even though he's not around that much. His ghost kind of is. Uh, and if you watch the chibi version of the show in junior, junior high, high, he is there more often. Yeah. Because of, because of how sad we are about what happened to him. Um, uh, but we didn't really know all of this coming into it. Uh, and my experience recording Marco was like less than six hours. And I remember being in the booth and I just finished this really amazing monologue that I said to uh, Jean as right before I like zipped away. And I was like, man, my character is like starting to own up to himself. Like he's like, we're going places. I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what's next? What's next? Can't wait. Uh, and then it, like I, uh, this is this is this is literally exactly how it went down. Like. Uh, just silence. And then, like, here's glass, and I, like, look over. And then I see the director, and he's, like, looking at a computer screen, and here's, like, the, the mouse, and he's just kind of scrolling, like, <laughs> up and down, like, uh... Searching for any dialogue. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then he goes, Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, you're dead, get out. <laughs> the biggest show that I've been a part of at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and it like uh, kickstarted most of my like convention appearance career, which I was living in a van at the time that we recorded it. So he was yeah. like, you're done. I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna eat this month. <laughs> but, uh, but I got invited to that Omni Expo, which is where I met my manager. Uh, who just sent me to a buttload of cons, and now I am not homeless. I live in an apartment, and I own a cat. Yay! What's happening? The cat's name is Haru, which is named after a cat in, in an amazing anime called My Roommate is a Cat. You should go check it out. <laughs> and now she really is. Anyway, let's talk about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any more? Oh, yeah, question. Your favorite characters, besides the one Ooh, you Brandless, with you, yeah. My baby, Emir. Oh. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> the moment um, when they're up in the tower and the Titans are attacking and um, she's in her form and she's hanging on for dear life and she sees that it's gonna topple if she keeps hanging on and she, they have that moment, that connection moment and she decides to let go. That killed me. <laughs> that killed me. I was just like, oh, my baby! <laughs> like, it just, oh my god. And that was the moment I knew. I was like, oh, they're forever. <laughs> they're forever. <laughs> it was beautiful. I um, shipped them. I shipped them hard. Oh man, especially after junior high. You can't not. Oh my god, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Fan art. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh nobody, nobody can do it like Maxwell can. But oh my God, that that yeah. Junior High episode was so funny. Is there anybody who hasn't seen Junior High? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Junior, Attack on Titan Junior High is so good because it's 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 a it's a. <laughs> He's just trying to look so cute. <laughs> Look at that's like a that's like a Tinder profile. <laughs> like, hey, I'm out, Dorsey. I want to be Dorsey. I want to be Dorsey. Sorry. I love you, Ted. <laughs> sorry, you go. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I was headbutting the mic, and now it's all like. Wait, let me see it. There we go. Uh, you gotta up the ante. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you keep talking. Daddy. <laughs> Distracted. I'm sorry. Um, no, Attack on Titan Junior High is cute because it's a nice little break from the original show. Because the original show, as we all know, is really happy and go lucky, and there's no death at all. 
Yeah, Bryn, you take that selfie. You take that selfie. Uh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Is this gonna have a real happy Easter? Okay, we focus. He is cute though. Characters in Attack on Titans? Yes! You know? Apart from your own! Okay, uh, Armin is my favorite character. That's a good choice. Um, uh, mostly because I love what Josh really does with the voice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is. I don't have enough time to describe it. Um, I actually do like Annie. Let <laughs> me uh, <laughs> rephrase that. I did. <laughs> I could just, I could just sense the tension between our characters. Oh my God! Get out! <laughs> He's been trying to ship them all weekend. He's been trying to ship Marco and Annie all weekend, all weekend. It's never gonna happen, especially now. It's never gonna happen. Has anybody read ahead in the manga? We're not going over all the spoilers. Yeah, he'll always be a huge part of her. I see. That's <laughs> true. Um, huge. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I mean, you should be ashamed. My, fi look, my favorite character yes. is Annie and Armin. Aww. Done. Yay! Question answered. <laughs> you did your job. Good job. Don't patronize me. Next question. Uh, now you answer! <laughs> What's your answer? <laughs> Don't use that charm on me, Kendall. Don't even try. Um, I have a few favorite characters. I really love Jean as a character. <clears throat> I think Jean because he starts off as a total douchebag in the series. He starts off as a total you know what, and you know, he just wants to live the easy life and go to the military police. <clears throat> but then he sees what the uh, scout regiment has to go through, and he sees what everyone else has, has to go through, and he kind of realizes oh, the military police, they don't anything and I don't want to do that so then he just grows incredibly as a character throughout the entire uh, series <clears throat> and uh, who else oh, there's so many great characters Levi's definitely up there Levi's great I mean I would love him to clean my apartment <laughs> that'd be pretty cool I ship him and Windex together <laughs> yeah um, and then uh, who else uh, Connie, Connie's just adorable. Yes. Connie and and uh, Sasha are like the comic relief of the show. Uh, so anytime you know that they're around, there probably is going to be a little comedic relief. Um, and I really love Bertolt, believe it or not. I love Bertolt. He's a sweet Aww. little baby, and I ship him and Annie hard. So yeah, because technically it's canon now. Because in junior high they, they go on a date. Busy uh, being in a crystal! crystal. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not better. It's fine. Uh, also, uh, uh, Jessica Calvello's character. Haji! Haji. Yes. Yes. How can you not love? Oh, she's amazing. Oh, man. There was this, this one moment in this past season where um, they're doing an interrogation. Yes. And um, <laughs> they throw the person they've just interrogated back into the cell. Mm -hmm. And um, she has a moment where she's all like, oh, are you sad now? Well, boo-boo! <laughs> it's, it's so quintessentially fun. Yes. Is it it's so like, Haji or is it so Jessica? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is there really that I know, much of a difference? Like, no. Nope. <laughs> like, nope, nope, nope. More questions, more questions. Austin, you pick somebody. You. I mean, the most important thing is, like, even though she's in a crystal, she's alive. She's not dead, exactly. Like, while well, she's in there, she like, can't so die. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know, like, because I, I don't know if I have any theories. 
sense on how it's going to happen, but I, my theory is that they're going to need some sort of information from her, and she's the only person that has that. So maybe they have to try. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she did it, not me. I did not do that. <laughs> okay. um, uh, and they have to try and figure out a way to like break open the crystal somehow, which I don't know how they're going to do that because they tried it before and it didn't work. But <clears throat> I think that somehow they're going to need to break her out of there or like maybe at the end of season three. And this is, I really do not know. I have no idea. But I'm expecting because Attack on Titan freaking sucks with their cliffhangers. Um, <laughs> like the worst would be if the very last scene of season three, if it shows her the crystal and her eyes all of a sudden open, I'll be pissed. <laughs> I would be so mad. I would be so That'd mad. Be amazing. Oh my god, it'd be amazing, and I'd be so stoked. So but... What if then something happened and we never got a season three? Why are would you doing this? <laughs> George R. R. Martin died. Right. <laughs> what if though? What if that was the last moment of three, and then we never got a full? I would no. No. Christ. That would suck and then, so and then, bad. And then the endless constantly asking me, "Hey, when, when is Annie coming back? That's never going to end." <laughs> oh, that is so sad. Oh my God. Why do you put such horrible thoughts? Or like she opens them, looks around. Everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I really don't know. Do you guys have any theories? Like, I'm not caught up on the series as of right now, so I don't know what's been happening in season three. It's all the dream of a young boy who's in a coma. <laughs> um, I don't know how much I can be like spoiler about, like, do I it. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, don't do it, don't do it. Who has seen, who has seen, uh, who's up to date on Titan? Who has seen all of season one? Season two? Okay. There's the majority, the majority. Who's read the manga? Okay, I'm about to have a manga moment. No! Like, <laughs> we just talked about this. No it's manga. very, it's very, no, but it's, it's, it's just like a, okay. like a, like, if it's, you've seen, Okay. The anime. Brynn, I trust you. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty big. Okay. Okay. Um, because like we know this from the anime. Um, Historia and Demir have been separated, and um, I I am not sure if Amir is still with us or if she has joined her comrade comrades in the sky. Um, but uh, I would. Like it very much if maybe Annie came back and brought back my baby. Aww. Brought back my baby. That'd be nice. That you know, it's nice. so funny. I've almost called Bryn Krista several times this weekend because Everyone does that. because you look like her Everyone and you are that. her. You're so I wish adorable. I wish I was her. Yes. And I and I know that technically her her real name is Historia. I don't give. She will always be Krista. <laughs> okay, the weirdest thing for consistency things. I'm sorry, this isn't anyone's question, but it really bothers me. Tell us. Tell us. Um, Tell us. So, Preach. Okay, but um, does it, has everyone seen the episode that's like um, Historia's backstory, like when she yes. meets her father? Historia um, is history. <laughs> Chuck this lemonade. Austin, the door is right there. Um, <laughs> okay, but um, I'm so there is a moment where uh, he's like, "No, wait, I'll rename her and we'll we'll send her off and like we'll completely distance her from me so that she can continue to live." And we find out that he's the one that renames her Krista, and he uses the name from her favorite book, her favorite childhood book, of, like the adventures of the character, Krista. And I'm like, okay, so is this just a very well-known common book, or has he like read this? Because I'm pretty sure the only person that has read this book with her is her sister. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> oh man. Um, it's just like, how the frick did he know the name of the character of this book? Like, but it was interesting to me. I was like, hmm, interesting. Hmm. Do you have a 
theory on Annie? Not really. No. <laughs> Have you read the manga? Okay, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> because I don't want you to spoil anything. Um, but I, I really, in all honesty, no joke, you guys, I am so, I understand that the story needed to take another direction to introduce the other characters, one of, like the Beast Titan and, and introduce who the Colossal Titan and the Armor Titan are, 100%, <clears throat> and, and introduce, you know, Amir's backstory and Amir's, you know, and, and Chris's importance, all of that, 100%. <clears throat> But I am so sad that Annie is not present right now. Yeah. I'm so sad because I love this show so much. <clears throat> and I honestly will, I will cry so hard if there is not a season four. Uh, if, and if she does not come back in this season, I will be very, very sad. Obviously, I don't expect her to come back in this season. I want that to be clear, too. I know that she is not relevant and present right now. I do know, I am aware of that. But as far as... Um, <clears throat> whether or not she's coming back at all. Someone, and I don't know if you're in the audience or not, I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot, I apologize. Someone came up to me and said, yeah, there's a rumor going around that, uh, that Annie, like, that Annie died. And I'm like, Annie didn't die, she's alive. She's in cryostasis. She's, she, <laughs> exactly, she ain't dead. So she will be coming back, she has to, she has to come back. Let's all be positive. Let's all be positive about this because who doesn't want to see the female type? I mean, come on. She maybe, maybe instead of her waking up, a more interesting thing. Because if she woke up, she would still basically be in prison, and she like would. she wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Maybe a more interesting thing would be, you know, how they're they're still sending people to like check on her, and they're like, I'm gonna go see if Annie's still there. Are they? Are, Are they, they sending people? To yeah. Okay. Um, like maybe instead of her just waking up. What, uh, it'll happen again where someone's like, I need to go check and make sure everything's like a okay. And she's and gone. She'll just not be there. Ooh. Like the crystal will be broken and she'll be gone. Oh, that that's awesome. Be awesome. I didn't even consider that. That, that would, would be because cool. then yes. there would be more opportunities. Like she wouldn't be, you know, yes, in holding anymore. Oh yes, yes. I I like this. We we that go with that. Cool. I'm gonna fantasize about that now. <laughs> okay, we had some questions over here, Richard. Done. Um, it's a two-part question. First for Bryn, and then for you afterwards. Sure. So I wanted to ask for Bryn, what did you think of your characters? Because uh, it sounds like you've read the manga and stuff like that. So what do you think about your character development uh, in the recent seasons and going towards like that? Um, you to be to what she's what do you think about that growth development? I really think she's coming to her own. Um, it, I mean, like the difference between the girl we saw in season one, which I pretty much equated to like a Disney princess. Um, and now, who is literally just like, get out my way, here comes the queen, boom, boom, boom. Like, and she's like totally ready to like assume all responsibility. Um, I mean, like we saw the scene in the cave where she's like, no, I'm not gonna let you, you know, take charge of me anymore. I'm not so naive anymore. I'm not just willing to like blindly trust and like, you know, like misplace my faith in people, you know, uh, she's much more wise in her ways. Um, she's much stronger. Uh, she's willing to go against what the you know accepted norm is and fight for what she thinks is right especially when it comes to Amir because a lot of people are very much so against it um, and against her and she is not afraid to speak her mind on the matter um, even if it's like the unpopular opinion um, she's like no this is what I've seen this is what I believe and I'm gonna stick to that um, and she'll fight for it and she's not afraid of that um, and she's really just stepped up to the plate, especially when it comes to um, assuming the throne. Um, I mean, because that's just, that's a lot to have thrown at you last second, and it really was just last second. Like, hey, here's our plan. And she's like, shit, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just, I mean, she's so ready. She's so ready for anything now. Whereas in season one, you know, she's really just sort of like, I feel like, along for the ride and she's not really making much of an impact where now she's like no this is my place this is why i'm here 
and I, I'm ready to make a statement, you know, and it's it's really great. Okay. Okay. That was awesome. <laughs> nice answer. She's a fierce mama. <laughs> Yes. Um, in my opinion, just from the like slight things that we saw before she moved her slides, it looked like there was possible shifts and changes in her development, things that might uh, change or grow her beyond just finding out more about her past stuff like that. Are you looking forward to what I be considered the inevitable uh, growth and development of that character uh, when she uh, is back into the spotlight in the show? I think so. I mean, <clears throat> the, the thing, the cool thing about this is that we don't know what direction it will go in when she is back. Um, we don't know if, if she's going to be, you know, want to fight on the different side. We don't know if she's going to want to go back to what she was before. And that's what's really fascinating about this show is that you really can't, you really can't predict anything in this show. I mean, you can, but then sometimes you're proven wrong. You're wrong. You know, right? I mean, I wasn't expecting Marco to die, but hey, it happened. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, it's it's like, it's, seriously, it's like Game of Thrones. You can't get attached to any character. Um, but I, I know that they did do a little behind the, they did do a backstory for Annie. Like, they did an animated version of it, but I, I we didn't get to dub that, so. I'm kind of sad about that, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, but I'm really excited to see what happens with it. And again, like I said, I am not up to date on where the show currently is. Um, what? I'm listening to you. For your ADD children. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I get distracted easily too. So. <laughs> um, but I, I really just. I really hope that there will be more with her. And I don't, like I said, I don't know where the season is at right now, but I also hope that Baratol will get to reveal his feelings to her. Yes! You know? Because he really loves her a lot. It's so, so cute! It's so cute! And, oh my gosh, Jessica Cavello, who was the voice of Kanji, she was super upset about the last, I think it was the, one of the last few episodes of season two, where Armin plays that dirty trick against <laughs> Baratol, where he's like, you know, Annie's chained up right now. She's in danger. They're, they're, they're torturing her right now. And it's like, oh my god, you sneaky little bastard. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's, I mean, obviously Armin did it for a reason, and because Armin's intelligent and very smart like that, but it just, yeah. So, I don't know what to expect, but I really hope that I, I really hope that we learn more and that she has more character growth 100 percent Because to be fair, let's be real, she has no character. <laughs> Annie is very blah right now, uh, or beforehand. She was very blah because she was very emotionless. She was a soldier and she was there on a mission. So we don't know what she likes or what she doesn't like, you know? At least with all the characters, we find out what their personalities are and with Annie, we just know that regardless of what side she fights for, she is honorable, you know? So, it's very interesting. I know there's a long way to answer. Huh? I don't think Annie's blah. When I say blah, I mean, I mean, she's just very uh, emotionless and and we can't get a good yeah. reading on her. I feel like, I feel like, the, like the, she's been trained to be that exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Like that she's like been conditioned <laughs> right. to have those walls. Exactly. Like, <laughs> walls. <laughs> <laughs> like and um, no, walls are that, <laughs> That's good. it just takes a while sure. for people to get behind that. And we kind of got like a little sneak at the very end of season at one. The, yeah. When she had that kind of mm -hmm. break and we saw her like, like the little yes. meltdown, the mini meltdown. Yeah. Exactly. And with, with Annie is is because she's so emotionless and because she doesn't want to show her emotions, because she was trained to do that, I no idea what's going to happen. And that's what's really exciting about the whole okay. thing. So I think we'll we'll definitely probably see like this a break though. Like there'll be another yes. moment where it just like but like not like the one that we've seen. No. But like something that's very raw. Yes. And like very like I think I think when she had that moment in season one where she just starts laughing, I think that was definitely a moment where she was like, I don't care anymore because yeah. you know I can't keep it a secret anymore. Yep. So you know. Hit the wall. Exactly. Yep. Hit the wall. <laughs> what? What?
What? A what? Chick. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. Yes. Yes. So we already heard Austin's story about when he found out about Marco. Attack on Titan's kind of like the king of understated reveals. And I'm curious for Lauren first, did you know that Annie was the female Titan and how did you feel when you found out? And then for all three of you, what was your reaction when you found out about Rhyna and Berthold being the armored and the colossal? Hold on, take a step back. <laughs> Annie's the female Titan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We talked is. about this the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you, remember, you thought that it was... Yes, yeah. so, so I, no, in all seriousness, um, when I watched Attack on Titan, I had just been cast, and I think I recorded like one episode, and I came back home and I said, okay, I really should probably watch this. So I get to the part where the female Titan comes into the, you know, she starts running in the field, we see her running, and then moments later, we see Rhina and a couple of the other guys stranded, and Krista rides out with the horses. I thought Krista was the female Titan. I thought Krista was the female Titan. Blondie squad. Well, I know, Blondies, exactly. And so, and, and also, at that time, Annie had not been present much like today. Um, you know, she had not been around all that much, so I thought, well, maybe Annie's just another side character, you know, which is fine, totally fine, but I was not expecting that Annie to be that big part of the story. So I just thought it was Krista because I thought it was really coincidental that we just saw the female Titan, or maybe it was the scene after. I don't remember. Either way, Krista shows up with a bunch, you know, with a bunch of horses, you know, and it's like I think I even said like I think Krista's so sweet. Can we really trust her? <laughs> um, Turns out you couldn't. <laughs> exactly. Oh. So I, I was really I was surprised, and when I found out, I, I texted. Um, uh, I texted a couple people. I texted Meg McFarlane, the voice director, and the voice of Jean Kirstein. And then I also texted Josh, who was the voice of Armin. And then I also texted Tatum, who was he, the, the voice of Commander Erwin, and also he was one of the writers on the show. Uh, and I texted Josh, and I was so like, oh my god, he is my favorite all time! And just Josh just replies to me saying, yep. <laughs> And Mike had the same reaction. It was just, I was texting him throughout the whole thing. I was like, I can't believe there's a female Titan. Like, what? I didn't even think those existed. And Mike, being the sneaky one that he is, basically sends me a text saying, there have been a few. <laughs> and I'm like, no, there haven't. You can't fool me. So yeah, I was really surprised, really, really pleasantly surprised. And uh, OK, funny side story. And probably some of you guys have heard this story so many times, so I apologize. but. When I first found out I was cast, I, I was talking to Mike on the phone, and he asked me if I knew anything about the show, and I said, no, I, I haven't seen it, I just know that a lot of people know about it. And he said, okay, well, here's the thing about Annie. Um, she starts off as a side character. I said, okay, that's fine, that's fine. He says, but she gets bigger later. <laughs> <laughs> so. But That's here's the thing, I hadn't seen it at that point, so I didn't get it. So it didn't occur to me until later. But, uh, uh, and then, I uh, uh, just wanted to know what our reactions were to Raina and Bertolt being the other two troublemakers. Mm -hmm. So, what was your, what were your reactions? Um, joy. <laughs> Man, that's it. Okay. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted stuff to go down. I was angry. <laughs> people think people think that Marco uh, is just all smiles, but there's a lot of resentment. Oh Bryn. All right. Um, <laughs> Bryn. <laughs> um. Honestly, it got spoiled for me. Mm. So, yeah. Was it you too? Was it YouTube that spoiled it for no, you? No, it wasn't. Okay. Um, but then I was looking back at it, and I was like, okay, Bertold, I can, I can understand where it's like, ooh, mystery, but Rhina, the hair, that ain't no big surprise. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh. like it's, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty dang similar. It is. You know? Yeah, like, it the is. The facial structure. Why does he have hair, but the Colossal Titan doesn't? Yeah. I don't understand that. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. I, I was, I mean, 
I, I, I think it was spoiled for me somehow, but I don't. Oh, yes, because of freaking YouTube. Um, oh, and that's so why I have that good oh, reaction. Yes. <laughs> but I, I will say, I was really, I wasn't surprised as much about the identities. What I was really surprised about was how they told Aaron that they were the Colossal yes. and Armored. It was just inserted into a conversation and I was like, oh, oh, I was expecting this huge big reveal, but apparently but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's literally the camera is is panning that way and all of a sudden you hear Ren and the colossal type and I'm the armor type and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? And I like grew out it and at that point I already knew, but I was still waiting for some huge reveal. And, and in a way, I, I, I'm still conflicted about how I feel about it because I, I still don't know if I think that's a brilliant idea or if I'm like let down by it. I have no idea. I don't know if you guys had any thoughts on that or not, but I just, I was like. I agree with you completely. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> that's a good answer. Was it like for a split second, like, oh my gosh, how did that bomb get through? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Because what if, what if someone wasn't paying attention? Yeah. What if they looked down for a second, or they were like texting or something, and then it, then they didn't hear it, and then the first thing they the first time they see them as the Titans, it's like, oh, oh, okay. So that was just a big surprise. Yeah, because if you didn't know, we leave like bombs for each other in the studio. Like we'll record something that's not in the script, but that like fits the flaps perfectly. <laughs> and so it's sometimes it's like yeah, we gotta make sure that we put the actual light in there and we don't yeah. leave the bomb. <laughs> I leave different bombs for people in the booth. I bet you do. I bet they're cold warfare. I bet they're stinky bombs. <laughs> Farts. Do we have any questions on this just side? I feel like I've been looking over here. Leave a lemon. So. In the booth. Leave a lemon. Yes, leave that's a lemon. trademark. I, I'm never eating a lemon again after this weekend. <laughs> do we have any more questions? Wow. Yes. Oh wait. In the back, and then you. Oh. Jeremy. Yes. We're going to call you Jeremy. Uh, I asked these two this question yesterday in a different panel, so I'll ask you, uh, Lauren. Yes. Have you ever played a character that was really outside your comfort zone, but ended up being surprisingly effective? Effective? Yes. Um, have I ever played a character that's been outside my comfort zone, but ended up being really effective? Um, dear. Um, you know, most people expect me to say a testament of Sister New Devil, but that wasn't outside my comfort zone. I, I have no problem moaning into the mic. It's fine. Um, no, that's what the series is for. Um, no, that was that. That show was a lot of fun because it was it was a great team put together, and we handled it, I think, uh, differently than the Japanese did. Um, but uh, I, I'd have to say probably Nora from Noragami, yeah. because she was, vocally she was out of my comfort zone, but a lot of people really like her because she's a creepy little yes. thing. Yes. And let me tell you, doing that voice at 10 a.m. in the morning is not easy. <laughs> naturally, my, my first thing in the morning voice is, like, it's like Annie, you know? But then, Nora's on the way up here, and she'll kill anybody who gets in the way of her and Yato. You know, so doing that at like 10 a.m. in the morning is really, thank you, is really, really just a pain in the butt. So, <laughs> what were your answers for your characters? I, I'd like to ask. Was it psychopaths? Okay. Yeah, and like figuring out like how to approach that like differently for a character, and like how you have to be like like their reasoning for things, like looking at it like a normal person would be like, oh my God, they're insane. But you have to look at it as like, no, they're totally justified. Okay. And like you have to approach it like from a different mindset. Nice. Austin? I don't remember what I said. <laughs> you said basically what? everything ever. Yeah, that. <laughs> Question. <laughs> what part of that should I see? Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Yes, you. Oh, does she? Yeah, but that's so, so cute. Yeah. What kind of donuts? <laughs> um, well, because they only have them in the inner walls, so she got to actually try them. So she, yeah. Oh. But um. And hamburger steak, right? Yeah, cheaper steak. <laughs> <laughs> was, there, um, was there ever like a scene, like?
realized when you were watching the anime, like the music or the animation, it just kind of shook you to your core. Oh, absolutely. Um, what scene was it? I think, well, the scene that comes to mind is, is when the whole Levi squad dies. <laughs> Um, you know, that one was really messed up. Um, and it, it, honestly, it's, it's sad that they're all getting, you know, smushed to death. But what's also really sad is, um, I think what really just tore me apart was, <laughs> it's not funny, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. When <laughs> Odawal freaks out at Petra getting smushed against the tree, because um, he just, you can see that he is, in so much pain as he's seeing the woman that he is clearly in love with like just be crushed to death and that's what i think that's really sad um it's also kind of a moment for aaron because he sees that these are people that are his heroes essentially and he's seeing all of them be slaughtered and that's got to be a rude awakening for him that no one even the levi squad is not invincible in this world um, i love moments like that um, the, a lot of scenes, a lot of episodes in the forest were pretty, um, pretty epic. Um, I also, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember any specific scenes, but there were so many scenes in this show that, at least in the first season, that just were really great and wonderful. And um, I think, you know, when we were recording it, obviously, you know, we like to joke around with Mike, the director, and have a lot of fun, you know. But there were times where, I mean, at least in my experience um, and some of the other cast members' experiences where because of the nature of this show, because we still wanted to kind of stay in that mindset and we wanted to keep it uh, like as real as we could, we didn't joke around too much because we knew how dark the show was and we really just wanted to do a legit, genuine job. Um, I don't know, that was my experience, but I don't know if it was the same for you guys. So, yeah. But yeah. yeah. You know, weirdly, sometimes the most gut-wrenching stuff in this show isn't like the moment like of horror itself, mm -hmm. but the other character's reaction yeah. to the horror. Totally. Like, yeah. That. That was. That was uh, when through some of the, some of the acting training that I went through. Uh, uh, I took some clown classes. Oh yeah. So it sounds really goofy, but uh, the clown is like the, it's the hardest like um, character to take on in a repertory company uh, because it's just absolute presence of the moment. Um, and it often results in silliness uh, because life is ridiculous. But like um, we used to do this exercise called Clown in Trouble. Um, and uh, uh, what happens is, is uh, you and the entire class, like you're a clown, the whole class is a clown, you put on your nose and you like do like clown stuff. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but it's not what you think it is. It's just getting, it's being silly to get in the moment and, and stop uh, uh, premeditating yourself. But anyway, the, 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 he the, the instructor will do this thing where he'll walk around and start demanding things from different clowns. Mm -hmm. And it'll be impossible tasks that, that they can't carry out. And uh, your, your job as a clown is to comply. You have to try to solve the problem. And the problem is unsolvable. And everybody knows what's about to happen. The, the, the instructor gets more and more irate until he slaps you in the face as hard as he can. Wow. Like literally legit actually slaps you in the face. And after experiencing it in the class for a minute, you want to be the one that gets slapped and not the one that has to watch the person get slapped. Mm -hmm. And that's the lesson. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Weird stuff, man. Do you guys remember that one scene where uh, it's real early on, and I think John and some other people just, it's like right after one of the first walls breaks. Mm -hmm. Wall, walls, yeah. Uh, and they're like in a library, and uh, like there's this one guy who very casually, with a smile on his face, just loads a pistol and blows his head off. That stuck with me. The, I thought about it too, the scene that uh, was like the first episode when Aaron's mom dies, like that hits me hard every time, especially with the music and everything, because it's, it's horrible, you know, because not only does this woman die a horrible death, but she is trying to be strong for her children, but then as soon as her children are out of reach, she then starts to show her fear, and that's when, you know, the audience is left to hope, oh, maybe somebody will save her, maybe somebody, and yeah. Spoiler alert, nope. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and that's that's pretty that's pretty gruesome. And when Aaron sees that Titan again, at that same Titan is pretty like, oh, what was gonna happen? You know. So yeah. also, see, there's so many scenes in the show when we find out that Titans can't. Um, they don't have any di digestive system, so when they, they cough up the, the balls, you know, of, uh, of the dead yeah. bodies. <sighs> oh, that's what you meant. Sorry. Yes! <laughs> it's like, why just the... <laughs> when they, when they, they fall... <laughs> I love you. When they regurgitate the, 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 the collection of people that they've eaten and there's just a moment where they're all staring, like all the, the, the soldiers are walking by and they don't, it's the first time that they've seen it and they're horrified because they see people that they know just dead, you know? And Annie's actually looking at that and I think that's, honestly, all joking aside, that's the scene where we see Marco. Yeah. After he's been killed. Um, so it's, oh, that's a, that's a powerful scene. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't voice it in the so. <laughs> I didn't make it powerful. Did Wait, they, oh, yeah. You go. No, no, go ahead. And this is a tangent, but has anybody ever seen the movie Life is Beautiful? Yes. yes. Roberto Bernini? Yes. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but there's a lot of similar elements. And I think about this with Marco, too. What's beautiful about that is just the, 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 uh, 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 the, like the gentleness of humanity and the desire for levity um, doesn't lessen with tragedy. Mm -hmm. It it grows. Yeah. Well, that's something that's great about the character of Marco is that he's always so positive. Yeah. And there, I, I haven't seen it in so long, but isn't there a moment where he's so positive, and I think Jean yells at him or something like. This is war. Stop looking so happy, or something. I, I don't remember. He said, tells you to wipe the smirk off, like his face or something, and and it's just you feel bad because Marco's so sweet, and he just wants his friends to do well, and he just wants to you know protect his friends and. Well, and 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 it, uh, his gentleness is not an expression of weakness. No, no, not at all. And and in time in times like that, things like that can be viewed that way, and and people can express that type of emotion in a weak way but it's he was he was doing the most important and honorable thing he could do by uh continuing that aesthetic and i think mm -hmm. for some people the aesthetic of the moment is more important than the outcome mm -hmm. of you know whatever's mm -hmm. happening especially in a hopeless situation we have one more minute guys so let's take one quick last question if you have it yes. or does anybody want to hear the results of my love life? Yes, discussion? I want to. We have a question. Oh, oh, we have a question. Yes. I was wondering what your guys' favorite episodes were. Of, of original or junior high? The original. Oh. And junior high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And junior high. And, and junior high. You can name it from original or junior. It's fine. Favorite episode. That's a weird thing to uh, pick in a show like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Funny. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, I got pretty angry at the show after my character died. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the episode where uh, uh, Aaron, like, they realize that his thing is broken, and that he's actually really good at what he's doing. Oh, the third episode. Is that the third yes, episode? Yes, and it's so good. That's one of my favorites. Too. I mean, that moment is really. I just it's love it so much. It. It's such a. It's part. It's such a Joseph Campbell's hero's journey kind of like. Mm -hmm. bah! Um, so I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed that episode, and uh, what, what am I supposed to say? That's it. Yeah. Oh, done. <laughs> Friend. Um, favorite junior high episode is the uh, ghost episode. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when we get to see her sister and where Mir is like running all over the place, like. Screw the rest of my group, I'm finding my baby. Like, <laughs> I love that. And then uh, for the actual show show, um, probably the one where she tells her dad basically to screw off and flips his ass. Yeah. Uh, and then it's basically just like, Aaron, get your shit together. I love that. And he's like, I'm just, I'm a burden to everyone. She's like, shut up. Like, it's so great. I'm sorry, Austin.
question, what's your favorite junior high episode? Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't want to give any, is it, would anybody be upset about spoilers about junior high? Okay. okay. Marco becomes class president yeah. and he doesn't die. <laughs> My favorite episode is the last episode of the season where he's still alive. Oh, that's, so, made it. that's so sad but wonderful at the same time. Uh, I also really love episode three of the original. I think it's a great episode. I think that's when we get to meet a bunch of the characters. Uh, I also love um, the episode where uh, we find out who Annie really is. I think that's a great episode. Uh, and in junior high, I love, 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 love the summer festival one. Uh, when she and Parento go, go on the date. Which, by the way, have two very big spoilers in them. Um, and for people who have not seen the original show, there are two very big spoilers because uh, Annie and Bertolt are, are on a date and they're sitting on a bench looking at this beautiful lake and they both have little tiny paper masks. One of them has a female titan mask, the other has a colossal titan mask. And it's like, it has, this came out before season two. So I was like, wow, spoiler much? But yeah, so. Do you guys have anything before closing ceremonies or is that it? Is this it for you? Oh, uh, this is it, this is my last panel. Yeah. The last panel, guys, for us. So yep. thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. There's a lemon on him. <laughs> I already gave him mine. I kept peeling it. I have my little. Oh no! Like, <laughs> so right right oh, my <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you guys. Anything you want to say to my dad before? <laughs> we gonna keep this going. <laughs> what you talking about? I know it. You're into him. <laughs> Oh my god.